Hey there, this is Pat Ennis of Ennis Legacy Partners. Welcome to the Exit Readiness Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Walter Dial, CPA and tax partner, GRF CPAs and advisors in Bethesda, Maryland. We also have with us today my partner, Ennis Legacy Partners, Corby McGordon. Our mission here on the Exit Readiness Podcast is to provide you, the business owner, with subject matter expertise on topics pertaining to building sellable or transferable business value and then planning for your eventual exit from the business. There there are not many absolutes uh, when it comes to owning a business, but one thing is absolutely certain, all business owners will stop being business owners at some point, 100%. Uh, We can know this, either someone else is gonna own your business at some point or it's gonna cease to exist. And we wanna help you at exit successfully on your own terms and conditions. Uh, gentlemen, and the work we do in, in both helping an owner build a business that's transferable or sellable, as well as then planning how they're going to exit, and, and actually really in every client engagement, and for a number of reasons, you get into, uh, the two of you get into a conversation with the client about Uh, what accounting method they're using, Uh, the cash basis method versus accrual. Uh, So that's our topic today, because it comes up so often and because it is integral to both building a business uh, and then exiting. Our topic for today's discussion then is accrual accounting versus cash basis accounting and your exit. And so what we want to do is just simply review the differences of each method and when and then when one method should be used over the other or instead of the other in building the business and and exiting. So Walter, let's start with you, our resident CPA. Uh, Can you first just give a brief description uh, of each method, cash uh, versus accrual? Sure. So I like to think of the cash method of accounting. It's kind of like what we all do with our own personal checkbooks those of us who actually keep track of our checkbooks. Um, And that basically means that when you write a check, you consider that to be an expense. When money hits your account as a deposit, that's when you consider it to be income. So So the basic rule is when money leaves your account, it's an expense. When money comes into your account, it's income. This is, so you verse that with the accrual method. The accrual method takes into account when you invoice a client, that's when the income is recognized, whether they pay it or not, you record your income when you invoice them. And if you receive a bill from a vendor, that's when you record the expense, regardless of when you actually pay it. So in the first year of your business, your cash basis accounting is gonna be basically everything you paid out versus everything that came in. And to change that to accrual, you would simply add all your outstanding invoices as income, and you would subtract all your outstanding bills as expensive as expenses. It's not that simple in subsequent years because you got to reverse. You know, the previous year it gets a little more complicated, but that that's the gist of it. Okay, so then uh, IRS. Are there IRS requirements for whatever it, it, pertaining to what accounting method that you use and how you and how you select it or elect it? Yes, there are, and there you know, the IRS is very pretty generous and flexible with this, especially with small businesses. So, if you have a three-year average revenue of less than a million dollars, you can do whatever you want. There's no no restrictions on your accounting method. You can choose the accounting, you can choose cash, you can choose cruel, you can choose, you can just choose whatever you want. If your revenue is higher than that, then it comes down to two tests. One is basically the material income producing test and one is the type of entity test. So generally speaking, if you're the type of business that sells merchandise, you must use the accrual method to properly account for purchases and sales. And if you're a C corporation with average revenue of more than $5 million, you also have to use the accrual method. The exception to that one is if you're a personal service corporation, which would be accounting, health, law, consulting, architecture, engineering, all those types of businesses. 
So those are the basic rules. So for a lot of our clients, you know, the, when you pick up a new business and they're under a million, you know, there's really very little thought put into it. Generally speaking, they're going to be cash basis. Um, for larger businesses, you know, they may end up as accrual. And the IRS does allow you to change your method. So it's not unusual to start off as cash and then either you're forced to switch to accrual because you get too big for cash or it just makes more sense to switch to accrual as the business grows. All and right. when you, as far as making the initial election, it's just whatever you use on your first tax return that's deemed to be your election. Okay, well, let's let's start then just drilling down, if you will, on, on the cash uh, basis method and the advantages and disadvantages. So what would be the advantages? Because I've heard, and I've heard you say this, um, a small business should use the cash basis as long as they can. I've heard, maybe you've said that. I've heard accountants say that. I think you have. But anyway, what are, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of the cash basis method? So there's a few advantages to the cash basis method. One is it's just very simple. You know, it's basically you look at your bank account at the beginning of the year, your bank account at the end of the year, the difference once you account for loans and distributions to members, things like that, is basically your income. So it's very simple, very easy to check to make sure everything's right. The other advantage is you have more control over the timing of your income. So let's say you're having an unusually good year and you know that the next year is not going to be as good. You could decide in December, let's say you usually bill your clients in early December, you could decide to bill them in late December so that you don't actually get paid until January of the next year. So you have a lot more control over your income. By the same token, you can prepay some expenses if you want to, if you want to reduce your income. So you have a lot more control over managing your level of taxable income. The other advantage is that if you are a growing business, the accrual basis is always going to result in higher income because you're accruing your income as you go. If you're using a cash basis, a growing business is going to have report less income than an accrual basis taxpayer. So from a tax reporting standpoint, cash basis gives you more flexibility and generally lower taxable income. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you can still generate financial statements that can be on an accrual basis. So like you can show your bank accrual basis financials, which are gonna be, if you're a growing business, you know, they, they may look healthier than a cash basis financial statement would. So that doesn't, doesn't preclude you from doing that. Yeah, I wanna come back to that point in a, in a few minutes when we talk about actual sale of your business yeah. and whether or not you should be Cash based or accrual. Uh, okay, so that that's good. Why um, or could you can you keep your books using the accrual method, but file your taxes using the cash cash method? Yeah, definitely. And I think I'm gonna let Corby jump in here because you know he's our as far as our operating group, he's our management guru, and Accrual basis books are very, very important for internal reporting. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll let him explain why and how he how he uses those books to help business owners. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah so, so as as Walter mentioned, the cash basis functionally, you're looking at your bank account, right? And oftentimes, business owners that do cash basis accounting they manage to whether there's money in the bank account or not. This year alone, or this past couple of years was a real wake up call in a way because a lot of businesses got PPP. So their bank account looks really solid, a lot of money in the bank. However, from a financial performance perspective, uh, it, it didn't necessarily look all that good, which could actually give a false sense of security. Um, and then secondarily, one of the things we really wanna do is help business owners look out long-term do financial projections as to how their performance might look over time so that when they're positioned for sale, they, they look good. Uh, we forecast in an accrual mindset, whether we think about it or not. You know, we, we say in this past year, we did a 
$2 million, we're going to grow by 25%. That tends to be a logic structure of, we know we're going to win work at this point in time, we're going to bill it at this time, which functionally is accrual accounting. When you're looking at books that are cash basis, there is a there can be a significant disjoint dependent upon when clients pay that really can skew your understanding of your performance and make it look either better or worse, uh, you know, which also can be just an undue cause of angst for an owner uh, where they're, they're uncertain about where they are. And so I have found that accrual accounting lends to much more certainty in a way, <laughs> peace of mind that we're actually hitting our numbers, we're doing the work we're supposed to do, and we're going to get paid for it at some point in time. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Corby. It, how, I really agree. It's really important uh, to keep accrual books from a management standpoint. How difficult is it if a client just isn't doing that right now? You know, they may use QuickBooks, but they don't use all the functionalities. Yeah. Is it difficult to get them to generate the accrual basis report reports? Well, technically, it, it's not that big a deal. The, the real challenge is the mindset. You know, we all tend to stick with what we're familiar with and, and owners that have been running on a cash basis for a long time feel like they're, they're in a way, they're losing control of their information because it, it would be different than what they had had before. So that there can be a real lack of trust almost in it. And, and, and they, they will push back on, on the, just because of the comfort level. Yeah. Yeah, I see that too. You know, the one area where I think it's really critical that they're thinking about accrual if, if they're not actually maintaining it, but I think they should be maintaining it, would be we have some clients together who, who receive prepaid income. Yeah. So what they don't realize is you know, the offset to that is a liability because you got to, you have now the income, but you got to do the work. Yeah. yeah and if they're just looking at their bank account balance, it's really deceptive. Yeah, you're, you're right, Walter. And that's kind of almost the, the worst case scenario, because oftentimes, if they are getting prepaids, and they're used to managing by bank account, the bank account looks fantastic, until they actually have to buy the material that they got paid for, and then pay the vendor for it. And we've run into cases where yeah. owners, all of a sudden, realize that I've got to stroke a check for a couple hundred thousand dollars and I spent it while business was slow. And accrual accounting won't fix the problem of slow business, but it will make you aware of my invoicing is down, therefore I need to conserve cash. And at least they're not unconsciously making a, a, a decision that could set them up for a bad spot. Instead, they would consciously choose to say, I'm spending cash that, that needs to be paid out later, but I don't have the choice. Yeah. And do you find Quick, QuickBooks is fine for a cruel basis? You know, it's, I think it's fine. You know, you can, you can set up a, a very detailed budget in QuickBooks and, and I do that for my clients. And, and as I said before, I, I project in an accrual mindset and so, you know, from that perspective, it'll, it'll kick out some, the essential reports that'll really keep a clean view of how am I doing against plan? And I would argue that if, if you're actually doing cash basis and you have a budget in QuickBooks, there is a disjoint between your, your plan and the actual numbers coming out of QuickBooks because, you know, timing, timing of payments makes all the difference. Yeah, and a, a, another, so, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Corb. I was gonna say another key factor, you know, mentioning just, just the planning, a key element to, to business exit and the value of a business is, is the ability to depict that we have planned growth and we've actually hit growth and, and we're still projecting further growth and this is why it's valid. Well, if, if, you planned over five years and, and looked ahead at what you could do and your books line up with that on an accrual basis, you're not subject to the spikiness and the inconsistency of payment timing. 
which you are on a cash basis. So you, your numbers look better. And, and any analyst in the M&A world or the ESOP world, they want to deal with accrual basis accounting. So if your books are already lined up with that type of accounting, you can literally produce the reports and print them out, no translation required. You're going to have a much higher probability of being believed. Yeah, so that's a great, that, that's a, a somewhat of a good segue into, you know, just thinking about cash versus accrual when you're thinking about selling your business eventually. Um, and, and the points that you just made about MA and Analyst Corp. When is it a good idea for an owner, let's say an owner who is, has continued with the cash base, basis method, but they've decided that the the right exit for them is going to be sale to a third party. Um, when when should they convert to accrual? Today, probably. But I mean, do you have any thoughts about uh, the timing of that and, and the important? And again, just stressing the importance of it. Yeah, I I, I do. I'll, I'll give a quick thought, and then Walter jump in as the certified valuation guy, but. You know, when you're, when you're looking at sale in five years, a key element is what's the company worth? Well, you know, the basis of any valuation is to a degree past performance. Even if you're doing a discount of future benefits, the credibility of that is based upon the past. And three to five years of history, you know, is, is normal to establish some credibility of trend and so if you've shifted, you know, six months ahead of time, your, your financials are less clear, therefore your data is more suspect or at least harder to, to get your arms around. Walter, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would agree with that exactly. And the other thing, like you said, even if you've been on a cash basis and you can, you know, you can continue to do that for reporting for tax purposes, but any buyer is gonna wanna see a cruel basis financials historically so you're gonna you're gonna need to be able to and you can you can go back and generate those retroactively but you know it's, it's a lot of work and anything you have to do that makes the buyer think like oh they have to go back and like produce this now they haven't been doing it you, you know you just don't want to be in that situation so at a minimum once you're three to five years out you need to be you need to be generating accrual basis statements but if you're going to build a valuable business, you need accrual basis statements, in my opinion, pretty much day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another element, though, though I am not a CPA, um, I do know enough that you know, the, the fundamental principle of accounting is to represent work accomplished, revenue earned, uh, you know, liabilities incurred, you know, that, that really are, are not cash. Instead, they're, they're, they're effort. And, as an, app, as an operations manager, I really want to focus in on the, how much work are we doing? How many people do we need to do that work or material do we need to do that work? And when the decision is made to expend, that's when I want to see it on the books because if I don't see it on the books for a couple of months, I, I can easily be deceived in, in, in the, the status of my managerial ability and the resources I have available to manage the business. So from a simple operations management perspective, much cleaner. Uh, it's, I think it's a much purer view of, of how am I doing? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we talked about with the tax planning, how nice it is to be on cash basis because you can really not, I don't, I don't mean manipulate in a negative way, but mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can control when you receive income and when you pay your expenses. So just by the nature of that, that means you can also control those numbers from evaluation standpoint. So anybody buying your company is gonna, have, is gonna be very suspect of, of cash basis numbers. It, it just wouldn't make sense for them to rely on that. The other aspect is when someone buys a company, they expect to, as part of that purchase price, they're gonna receive a certain amount of working capital. And working capital is all about liabilities and receivables, you yeah. know, assets and liabilities. So you, you have to do the accrual work just if for nothing else for that component. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's a great point, Walter. And 
another element that the thought passed through my mind is when you think about managing a business, there, there is the day-to-day -day performance and then there is the balance sheet. You know, how much do I owe? How much am I owed? And I think cash basis can actually kind of allow for a disjoint in thinking. Um, on an accrual basis, you're always aware of what loans do I have outstanding, but you're also aware of, of almost the credits you have coming, the, the accounts receivable takes on, a, in a way, a new meaning uh, as a counterbalance to, to that, that debt, how much do I owe? And, and it, it enables you to function, I think, more logically as you, as you try to cross between a P&L and a balance sheet and think, how do the two play together? And I found it just gives me, as a non-accountant, a clearer understanding of, of you know, what's my position both in cash and, 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 and debt and assets. Uh, it, it's much more meaningful. In the cash basis, I've got to do some creative manipulation of, of, of numbers to get a clear picture on, on where am I at. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Yeah, because it, it's interesting. I'll have you know, a cash basis client and I'll just make up numbers. Let's say they have a $300,000 profit and they're like, well, I don't have that money in the bank. What happened? Right. And they're not thinking about the balance sheet. Well, they have a $200,000 profit, but they use 50 to pay back a loan. So exactly. that money went out the door, but it wasn't a deduction. Yep. You know, yep. maybe they distributed $100,000 to themselves. So that's yep. not a deduction. Yep. So yeah, you're, I, you're exactly right. You got to have the balance sheet in mind to effectively manage your business. Yep. Yep. All right. Hey, here's a question. Okay. So we've talked about uh, a third party exit or sale and, and how um, it, 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 having a, the, the accrual method is going to be key for, you know, the due diligence process and, and uh, the, a, a good transaction. What about, does it impact at all a sale to insiders, to key employees? Like if you're if you're the owner and you're going to be selling to key employees, and there's going to be some self financing, of course. In most cases, there are some bank financing and and some um, hopefully some cash up front somehow. Uh, would it serve the selling owner to have accrual based accounting in place? Uh, before that transaction happens, does it would it would it help that selling owner to be even more assured that the business is going to run be run uh, better uh, with the accrual with the accrual method in place prior to the transaction as he he or she transitions the business to the insiders? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, Walter, you want to jump in? Yeah, I think, you know, and Pat, we've talked about this a lot. When, you're when you have a sale to insiders, you know, it's just as important that the business is sellable and, you know, run well and everything else, which in, our, in my mind means a cruel basis. And not only is it important for the seller, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a business unless I had a good handle on what the, what the accrual basis numbers are. Yeah, that was my thought too, is even for, for insiders, let's face it, we talk a lot about this, that there's a difference between an owner and a manager and, and senior management may have the potential to become owners, but I think the accrual basis is, is easier to understand, as we said before, from an operational mindset. So I, I would think that insiders would have more confidence in those numbers when when they're not having to actually step into thinking hard about accounting in a way, but instead just, hey, we won the business, we build it here, it's coming. By the way, we have this much debt, this much cash in the bank, and this is how the, the, the math fits together. I think it's, it's simpler for them to understand, thus have greater confidence in, in assuming the role of owner. Walter, do you have any follow-up thoughts to that? No, I, I, th I think that's exactly right. Okay, good. So um, let's let's begin to wrap up here. Any uh, we summarized the, the advantages of 
a cash basis as being, it, it's simpler, of course. And then it, and it allows an owner to uh, maybe better manage uh, it taxes at the end of the year by managing revenue and expenses. Uh, first off, would you add anything else to that? Those advantages for cash basis method? The only thing I would say is that there are certain types of businesses that that's not the case. So if you're a business that's receiving prepaid revenue, cash basis is going to be, it's going to be bad probably as opposed to better. Um, we have some clients who have like subscription-based income. So they're better off on the accrual. There is something called a hybrid method that the IRS allows in certain circumstances and some subscription companies qualify for that. So while the general rule for a small business and certainly a service business is you're probably going to start off cash basis, you know, just don't jump to that conclusion automatically. You know, you, you need to run it, run it by your CPA just, just to make sure. Okay, so then let's uh, summarize as well. I know you, you hit on the advantages of the accrual throughout the conversation today, but just summarize those advantages again. For the accrual method. Corby, you want to do that since the mostly management? Yeah, yeah. One of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> one of you guys say something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the advantages are obviously there. There's a uh, apples to apples comparison between the projections that you have in your forecast for the year, your budget, and what you're actually seeing coming through the accounting system. I think it's easier for a non-CPA to actually understand, uh, and it gives clarity on your balance sheet where your your income and expenses are clearly on your p and l and you avoid the traps that we we've, we've mentioned in the past of of prepaids and and delayed payments from clients skewing your decisions yeah pat and i just did a um evaluation for a client and you remember pat he had that one year where he had all this revenue and we're like what was that and because we, you know, we were looking at cash basis numbers i mean what was that and he said, oh, yeah, there was a client who was really slow pay, and he, he caught up in that one year. Yeah. But, you know, if it was everything on a cruel basis, it wouldn't have looked like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that particular client is thinking about or is thinking that his exit is going to be a third-party sale. It makes sense that it would be. He doesn't have any insiders that would be candidates for ownership, no children in the business, not an ESOP candidate. So there was a recommendation that he moved toward accrual accounting um, as soon as possible. So then, okay, um, uh, let's wrap up. The, uh, Walter, any business structure, does business structure, LLC, you know, S Corp, C Corp, come into play when making a decision uh, regarding cash basis or accrual or no? Where it does come into play, if you have a, a very large, over $5 million corporation, if you're a C Corp, you have to go to accrual. If you're an S Corp, you can maintain your cash basis. So that is actually a consideration for some companies. Although, like we've said, you know, most, most large companies, they definitely are going to be keeping in their internal books for accrual. But if they are still you know, growing and they really like the flexibility of tax uh, managing their tax bill, by using the cash basis, if you're an S-Corp, you can, you can keep that. Okay, good. So um, let's wrap up with three to five action steps or takeaways, however you want to phrase it, for listeners today is in, in regard to this topic. What, what advice, five pieces of advice, five uh, next steps, whatever. What would you say? Well, I just, Corby and I will probably copy each other. So maybe we'll take turns. <laughs> the first one I would say is um, if you're not maintaining accrual basis books internally, you should be. Yep. And if one, if you're not doing an annual budget with projections, you should be. Secondarily, then you should consider uh, how you assess your performance 
over the course of a year, month to month, and will accrual suit you better than cash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that probably sums it all up. The other thing I would go back to is what Corby said about mindset is a business owner has to get out of managing by the bank, by the money in the bank. They need to be aware of, yeah, I've got money in the bank, but I've also got a $200,000 line of credit with the bank, you know, things like that. So I think that's important. If they are operating from an, a cash basis mentality, they need, they need to change that. Yeah, and then, and one other thought, there are, if, if you read, hit a blog and advantages, disadvantages, you'll, you'll find there are some disadvantages to accrual accounting as well. There can be some semi-complex revenue recognition rules, but, but having dealt with it in a lot of different industries, while they may be complex, industry specific, they're not that hard to grasp. So don't let, don't let that be a hindrance to making the move. All right, very good. All right, great job, fellas. Uh, you know, we always ask guests if there's anything that they want to promote <laughs> uh, in regards to the topic. Is there anything that the two of you, either one of the two of you would promote in regard to this particular topic? I'll say something for Corby. I've been, I love the way he does the, the cash management or growth management plans. So that's something, you know, any business owner listening, in my opinion, should look into. The other thing I'm excited about is just the recent evaluations Pat and I have been working on together to present to clients just as the first step in getting ready for exit. They're not real expensive. And our experience with clients has been that they love them, they learn a lot, and it really gets them moving in a, in a good direction. Good. Okay. Yeah. So... Strategy renovation growth plan. That's what uh, Walter was referring to, I think, in regard to you, Corb, right? Uh, that's the product. That's our product that Walter was referring to. And then an estimate of business value. So, so th those are two good promotional ideas. Very good, gentlemen. Great job today. Um, listeners, thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, you, um, we want you, we, we want to encourage you in addition to these things we pertaining to the topic that we've discussed today to begin planning now you can't you can't begin planning too soon this this is just one thing to consider your accounting method in regard to a successful exit there's a whole lot of other things to consider in addition to this and so we if there's anything that we we, we want to get across it's begin to plan now it takes uh, a long time in most cases and and you'll, you'll have the greatest uh, uh, chance for success. And um, if, you, if you need help with uh, anything that was discussed today or building sellable business value or planning your exit, you can contact Walter at 301-951-9090 or Corby and myself at 301-859-0860. Uh, we, we offer initial no fee, no, no obligation, introductory conversations and meetings, of course. You can access, uh, by the way, you can access uh, online resources at grfcpa, nslp.com, and exitreadiness.com. If you establish an online account at exitreadiness.com and use the coupon code podcast, uh, you'll get 10% off of uh, any of the products that you take advantage of there. So thank you again. And until next time on the Exit Readiness Podcast, this is Pat Ennis, Walter Dial, and Corby McGordon signing off. <laughs>